Nokia 2, 1986. Um, I believe there it hailed from three different places. Uh, there was uh, Chicago, Los Angeles, and I think Madison Square Garden. I'm not sure. I gotta, I gotta look it up real quick. WrestleMania 2. A lot of people would say like it's one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Um, it's hard for me to say that it, it's you know even close to being the worst, mainly because um, it was still WWE uh, trying to dip their uh, feet into the waters of having such a big show. Yeah, Na Nassau Coliseum, it's one New York, Rosemont, uh, Illinois, t uh, stadiums or arenas, I should say, and combined in those three uh, shows. Match in Madison Square Garden, since that's where it all started, and this is the match that I would I, I would have at Madison Square Garden. Uh, the Battle Royal. Uh, it would be like a 20-man Battle Royal. And have a few dark matches just for the people that bought the tickets to see the show. And uh, maybe have that those matches be available on VHS uh, later on. But this is the main match. This is the main match that would be broadcasted on pay-per-view uh, on Madison Square Garden. And we would have this Battle Royal. And uh, of course you see like four heels, right? Well, the, the way that I would have done was uh, done it was uh, Big John Stud turns babyface uh, right after the um, the body slam challenge. Bobby Heenan is berating Big John Stud, and maybe in an episode in in one of the uh, Saturday Night's main events because they had around like six every other month they would have a Saturday Night's main event uh, in 1985 and as well as 1986. So they would have those shows to kind of build up to the next WrestleMania. So what I would have done was one of those shows have Big John Stud turn babyface and uh, Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov still heels, keep them heels. Randy Savage, I would bring him in as a babyface. Bring him in as a babyface, him beating up guys, uh, getting quick wins, and is is being built up. And you bring him onto this battle royal. So I chose Randy Savage, so I guess you know who's going over. So this is what I'm what I'm going for, right? Um also in the in the battle royal I would have the uh what what football players that they have. They had a lot of people from the NFL in this um in this show, they had a lot of people. As this loads, I'm just gonna look for. Yeah, it was just you know WWF versus NFL. You know, so they they had a bunch of football players. I would do the same thing, have all the football ball players here, but you know the final four are these guys that you see on your screen right now: Nikolai Volkov, Iron Sheik, Big John Stud, and Randy Savage. I might have gone. I I I could have gone with uh, somebody else, like a uh, Jim the Anvil Nightheart or you know even Brett. But at the same time, they they weren't as proven. They're not as big of names at this time. So Baltimore Maryland. Here comes there. Hmm. Oh yeah! I think that is the site of uh, WrestleMania. I want to say WrestleMania. Eight. No, 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 that was in Indiana. So, Randy Savage looks good here. This is the fault I didn't download it. Didn't download the other paper. And she, Cheeky Baby. From Tehran, Iran, weighing in at... And from Moscow, Russia. They, they look good. As you've seen in uh, my WrestleMania 1 rebooking video, as well as Big John Stud. So, hopefully, I'll be able to win this match um, as the way that I would rebook it. Fatal four way um, action is underway here, guys. Other, I, I'm the, the smallest I person, never get literally tired the smallest watching person these guys compete. in this match. Oh! 
And I think it would be a good underdog uh, type of uh, you know win for uh, Randy Savage. Let's see if uh, we get an elimination here. He's not in here. a good spot here, guys. He simply needs to find a way to regroup. You gotta believe this one's over. In WWE, there's as much chaos outside the ring as there is inside the ring. Try working with Saxton on ringside. I'm gonna go the easier route by just getting finishers. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier doing it with finishers than uh, the height on the knee drop from Macho Man. He's like you're starting to sweat like now. Like he needs to create some space and find a way to get back on the offensive. A crucial point in the match here, guys. He's got a target on his back now, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a three-on-one attack here. Well, this certainly escalated in a hurry. I don't think any of us expected to see him fall behind so quickly. Max Handle finds its target. Boom! Running STO plants it. Nicely done. Take you back to December 7, 2015, and one of the largest matches in WWE history. The Fatal 4 Way Tag Team Elimination Match. You had the Usos, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns versus the Wyatt family against the League of Nations against Team ECW. From the moment the bell rang, it was absolute chaos. Oh man, jarring headbutt. Byron, the fatal four-way tag team elimination okay, match we spoke of earlier was I certainly an exciting way to help close out 2015. The WWE Universe knew to forget what they thought they knew about tag team matches when both Usos were going to superplex Rusev and Braun Strowman entered the ring and powered on both Usos as they superplex Rusev. Michael, that was an unbelievable display of power by the monster among men, Braun Strowman. And here he goes. With that's how you put an exclamation point on the end of a match, guys. I think Randy Savage just secured this match. Since there are no disqualifications in a fatal four-way match, a superstar has to be I'm aware of that. The, uh, but if they're in an elimination fatal the four-way match, someone who was eliminated can come back for retribution, and it's all legal. So you can eliminate an opponent, and they can interfere in the match later, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Boom! <laughs> Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. Myron, you touched on something earlier that's worth repeating. If you're a superstar competing in a fatal four-way elimination match and a competitor is eliminated, they can look to settle a score and affect the outcome of the match later. That's always a possibility in a fatal four-way match because of the no disqualification stipulation. Michael, that's what I like to call an occupational hazard. We saw an example of that in 2016 during the I Fatal no Four Elimination Match to determine the number one contender for the WWE Championship. The Miz was, I think we know what this is. Yeah, when he's going like this, no telling how long he'll keep it up. He's talking his opponent from the top turnbuckle. And looking for the win. Is it enough though? All that's left now is for Randy Savage to finish this. Now the old vicious head crank. Look at the torque. Oh my goodness, this is. I wish I can turn off the commentary. On he dodges out of the way. Not today. Oh. He's left wide open here. I don't think he even realizes it. He looks dazed. He's about to get back. He might have it. Oh, what a clothesline. Forcefully delivered. Okay. I'm not sure how much he has left. things will get easier right now. Randy Savage. And boom! Line. I knew it was he only a matter of time. Oh boy, he is rolling. Going all the way up. I think Randy Savage is Good done playing. Off. We have seen him here before. Oh. Oh. But he's got to capitalize now. And the odds just swung in Randy Savage's favor. Beautiful technique. 
History was made on Monday Night Raw the night after 2016 SummerSlam event. It was a special Fatal 4-Way Elimination match to crown a new Universal Champion. Here we go. And boom! Oh, uh, Savage yes, wins the it. Battle Royal. WrestleMania 2. Let's take another look at these guys getting after it. A much better win for him rather than... Um, I, I believe he, he lost the here. account out to George the Animal Steel. Either that would be cool. These superstars gave as good as Ooh. they got, and these fans got their money's worth from the opening bell. Yeah, that's, here is your winner, Macho Man, Randy That would be the opener for WrestleMania 2. Start off hot with a battle royal. And then we move on to Chicago. And uh, the first match in Chicago that I would go for would be for the... Let's see. What do we have over here? Okay. Yeah, you know what? We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Tag team match. Select arena. WrestleMania 2. The WrestleMania 2. And let's see. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. You know? This this is a really good match. That I think would be very, very interesting. Uh, let's see. Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff. Mr. Wonderful. And... And we got... A Rowdy! A Rowdy! A Piper! Let's go with that outfit. And they're going up against Andre. Yes, Andre the Giant. And you talk, we, we talked about WrestleMania 1, where I had the Dream Team in WrestleMania 1. Now we got another Dream Team, another huge tag team. Replacing that, that weird boxing match from WrestleMania 2 with... Andre the Giant teaming up with... Let's see, Mr. T. Yes, Mr. T. Going up against Paul Orndorff and Roddy Roddy Piper. Paul Orndorff just came back because, like I said in my WrestleMania 1 rebooking, I would have um, kept him off TV. You know, he would have been suspended by Jack Tunney due to his devious acts uh, against Cindy Lauper. Um, get his arm worked on so that he can come back better than ever. And he would team up with Roddy Piper going up against Mr. T, uh, attacking Mr. T. There would be a, 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 an episode of Saturday Night's Main Event where Mr. T is facing Roddy Piper. Paul Orndorff makes his return, attacks Mr. T, and thus leads to this uh, tag team match of Paul Orndorff and Roddy Piper going up against Mr. T and Andre uh, the Giant. After Andre makes the save in another episode of Saturday Night's Main Event uh, leading up to this show. So they team up and it's like, okay, I, I got your back, Mr. T. I got your back, boss. That was a terrible Andre the Giant impression. But you get the gist. That, that's what I would have gone for. I think, I think this would have been a, a hot opener. I would put like a championship, but then again, the prestige, the prestige of the titles going on last instead of, you know, opening the show. That was the deal back in the, uh, in the 80s. So, Paul Orndorff. That's a claw. I, there was and the raw sign. From Glasgow, Scotland, weighing in. 230 pounds. Looking the great. Superstar. Yep, the superstar. As we all know. And you see they're wearing different outfits. 
going to play a role in this match. <laughs> yeah, Mr. T, if you, uh, if you don't remember, he was part of the Undisputed Era. And his partner from Chicago, Mr. T Illinois, looks horrible here. Weighing in at 241 but, pounds, but believe it or not, this Mr. was the best Mr. T I could T. find. Where's this so going? Before the match even a... starts. Oh, and now we have a brawl on our hands. Boom. Oh, you know, yeah. attack. They didn't need the match to start to make a point. Attacking the baby faces before the match even starts. This isn't where he wants to be, guys. He needs to get back inside that ring. Headlock. Oh, and a cheap shot right above the eye. Okay. Now cut to the match, right? Set him up. Ooh, nice Russian leg sweep. What a stomp. Good grief. Ooh, what impact. Squeeze vertical suplex. Nice. Boom, what impact. Right to the back of the net. So basically, they, they would have the match. And, you know, it's, it goes, it goes for like 10 minutes. They're, and they're going at it. His partner looked extremely confident. And I wouldn't have the heat be on, on Andre. Let the heat be on Mr. T. And what a close line! Ouch! And oh, Andre boy, gets the hot rolling. tag. Come on, tag Mr. T. I want you to tag Mr. T. Come on. I want the heat to be on Mr. T, not Andre. Oh, look at this aggression in the court. Be careful not to get disqualified. Come on, Andre. I liked you when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a tag team match. <laughs> okay, that would have been close to getting out Come of the court. If I'm his partner, I'm furious right now. There's no reason why he shouldn't have made a tag. power slam. I'm not sure how much he has left. Oh, here it comes. Man, incredible impact. That almost came out of nowhere. Oh, nasty impact. Double axe handle smash. He's on his heels. Oh, his hopes of winning this tag team match are starting to dwindle. Yeah. If you told me heading into this match that he was going to go on, especially you, Sax. But, but, but then, then there were the calculations oh, boy, between uh, Piper and uh, Piper and Orndor. When you talk about great tag teams, we can go all the way back to teams like the Tolos brothers, Stevens and Patterson, Stevens and Bobwinkle. The Texas Outlaws, the Briscoes, the Blackjacks, the Andersons, and the list goes on and on. When you're part of a tag team, the two partners have to travel together, train together, eat together, and be completely in sync with one another. Tag team competition dates back all the way to the early 1900s. Corey, you mentioned some of the classic duels in sports entertainment. Oh, what disrespect. This one's over by way of disqualification. That's how He's I would end it. He's making a statement here with this attack. You, you keep... So... That way you keep Andre strong and him like fighting off the heels 
and Orndorff what, what I would have done was Orndorff turns on Piper he turns on Piper hits Piper with a steel chair and then hits Mr. T with a steel chair then Andre fights him off and you know Paul Orndorff runs away with his tail between his legs thus um, the, the house show loops would be Orndorff versus Andre that, those are the matches that we get to see in the house show loops um, uh, Orndorff would kind of work out his dates until you know he leaves the company because I believe he left at late 86 and then went away for a little bit went, uh, went to a different company I'm not sure if he went to the NWA just yet but he was in the NWA in, in the late 80s so that's what I would have done that would be the first match on the um, Chicago side of things. And yeah, that would be the match to start off the show. I would have started off the, the, the show with another match, but the, the other match I would have the heels go over. And we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So to kind of, man, I got a lot of tag matches on here. You know what? Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Instead of tag match, we'll go with a regular match. But we're going to have uh, somebody in our corner. So just to keep things... Because there, there are a lot of tag matches on here. I don't want to dilute the idea of, uh, of tag matches. So, okay, we'll, we'll go with this, and we got, let's see, Terry Funk, okay, let's go with this outfit, add a manager, okay, and I would have gone with the tag team, Dory Funk and Terry, but, yeah, you know what, I got a better idea. I got a better idea. You know what? Let's let's save the Funk Brothers. Let's save the Funk Brothers, okay? Let's go with this instead. Rebooking on the fly. Um we'll do You know what? Okay. Okay. You know what? I cuz I do think that this would be a better match. Let's go with Tito Santana. Tito Santana will... Yeah, he had this outfit. Add a manager. Okay. And his manager at this time would be Junkyard Dog. Okay. And he's going up against... Not Braun Strowman. Brutus, the Barber Beefcake. And he's got a manager of his own. Well, two. Two managers. And that is... His partner. So, we'll go with this match. And we will put the Intercontinental Championship on the line. Okay. Let's go with the Intercontinental. Should we go with the... Um, should we go with the original... The original Intercontinental title. Because I do recall that the black strap was introduced around this time. I think Tito Santana had that. So let's let's go. You know what? Let's go with this time. Yeah, let's go with the... With the let's keep things... Uh, let's keep things as close as possible. So, yeah. The Intercontinental Champion, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, defending the Intercontinental Championship against... George, the Animal Steel, who's accompanied to the ring by Classy Freddy Blassie. I think there, this would have been a, a fun little match. Um, Steamboat being the babyface, the, the good-looking, rugged babyface um, against, you know, the the evil heel, the, the, the ugly heel. I, I love ugly heels. You know, that was the thing back in the 80s where you had, like, 
this big, fat, ugly dude as a heel. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so clear cut. Like anybody, any casual fan that, that watches the show and sees like one good looking guy as a baby face and another as a heel. It's so simple. It's, it's, it's so easy to tra translate. Um, so let's get to it. From Detroit, Making uh, Steamboat basically my number two guy. Singles action is underway, and in this one, I wouldn't attempt to predict what's going to happen. I'd just be ready for anything. Sometimes it's all you can do. And this is one of those matches happened, where it's hard to believe I guess I we get paid, paid for this. For that elbow. Well, actually, hard to believe Saxton gets paid for anything. What a strike! starting to slow down a bit here. He's going to need to find a way to fire back. Yeah, he's taking on some offense here, but that's to be expected, especially considering he's in the ring. By the looks of it, I don't think he expected his opponent to be as motivated as he clearly is here tonight. Drop down. Nice. going to take more than that to keep his shoulders down way too early. Harsh impact. Oh boy, he is rolling. A bad place to be for the challenger. This is not at all how the challenger drew this one up. Double underhook applied. Up and... Slam, slam, free fall. This just might be enough for him to take the victory here. That is exactly what Ricky the Dragon Steamboat needed. Look at Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Steamboat from the top, diving cross body. This might be it, guys. Now that's going to be the second has come to an end. Wow. Let's take Let's another take look at these guys in action. action. These guys showed flashes in this match, but flashes don't exactly set the world on fire, as these highlights show very well. Here is your winner, and still the Intercontinental Champion. Steamboat retains the Intercontinental Championship, and I would just let him go through and, and be that, that top guy as the Intercontinental Champion. And now, for the tag team titles on the line. We'll go with Terry Funk. I believe that, yeah, okay. Terry Funk, along with Dory Funk Jr. going up against the Bulldogs. I believe that was okay. Yeah. Matching attires. So yeah, let's let's put a championship on the line. Yeah, look look at that. Tactiles from the eighties. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful belts. Best looking tag team titles I've ever seen. 
if I should say so myself. Yeah, and that, and what a lineup. You know, you got you got the the uh, the Bulldogs going up against the Funks, and uh, the way that I would have done it was uh, basically have the Funks uh, challenge the Bulldogs for the tag titles, because I think the Funks were in there for a little bit. So. That's how I would have done it. I might have had the Bulldogs go over, actually. Thinking about this. Because, like, it's it's very babyface heavy. I had Tito go over. Andre and Mr. T. You got Savage. You got Steamboat. You got to have a heel go over at some point. There are a lot of, a lot of babyface wins. You know what? I'm going to go with the Funks. I'm going to go with the Funks. The following contest. I'm going to go with the Funks going over here. And, um... I was... Because I was thinking, like, hey, you know, the Bulldogs keep them, you know, winning the titles here. Would have been a big moment. And his partner, Dynamite Kid, one of the best wrestlers of any era, actually. I would have gone with the Funks mainly because, like, it, like I said, it's babyface heavy, where most of the babyface are, are going over. So you got to give the heels at least something, and. Um, it's simple. Just have the Funks go over here, and then they, they drop the titles. Both legal men are in the ring and set to start things off here. here. They, they, they drop the titles at a Saturday Night Main Event. Technique. Set thunder a slam. Dory doesn't look good. There's Dory is is. <laughs> Opponent off the ropes. He Big looks backdrop. like any other KO, you know. He looks like any other uh, trade uh, wrestler. Does not look good at all. Boom! Kick it, finds it. Kick to the. A lot of double team moves. Left strike. Coming like this bull boy. We'll get you all the glory here. He's got some fight left in him. Too soon. Oh, to the back of the neck. What a lariat. Look at this. He got body on body there, but that's about it. Have to put in a little more work than that. Kick to the... Boom, right on the ear, the ends of carry. He goes for the cover. An easy kick out there. Can take more than that. by the funks. Specifically targeting the leg. Kick to the... Ring rattling. The end may be near, folks. 
This is not where he wants to be at this point in this tag team match. Things have really gone from bad to worse for him here, guys. He's going to need to make a tag sooner rather than later. I can't really tell what his game plan was heading in. Oh, like a heavy back. That should do it. Very impressive, but is it enough to end it here? Boom. Driver spiked him. Game, set, match. This one is over. Boom. What a power rider. Come on, Dory. Oh, he's able to reverse it. In May of 20... Oh, my goodness. The superstar is strike just striking at will. Can he finish the job? Oh, man. What a nasty ST. He's got him covered. And we got new. They did it. They won the match. Well, not really new tag team champions. They, they would have come in as tag team champions and... These guys were awesome. Pilots. Let's take another look. Oh, I can't believe this. Boom. Some pretty good give and take in this match, as these highlights show. I do like the Funker. I know the match was solidly entertaining, but I really hope these guys will take it to the next level. Regardless, nobody's asking for their money. Superstar. Put it Terry the Funky. And there was no question about that one. That's a statement win, Michael. That's a win that says, hey, look at how happy they are. Me. Like freaking baby wow. faces. Just wow. I'm speechless. What an amazing match. And those are your tag team champions. Terry Funk and create a wrestler. <laughs> so yeah, that's and now for the uh, for the main event. We go for the main event of WrestleMania two, and it is first off. There's no pinfall or submission, no. Gotta go for the uh, old school blue cage, but uh, scrap trap, <laughs> scrap trap. <laughs> yeah, I'll steal blue, okay. Recovery time, normal. Okay, all right. Well, let's start off with finishers. <laughs> let's start off with finishers. To make it more interesting. And, uh, yeah, okay. And of course, you know. You know what the main event is. I can't change it. I can't change that awesome match. It was an awesome match, actually. And I'm not being facetious. It was really a, a really good match. So, King Kong Bundy. There we go. Put a title on the line. I don't know why, but let's let's do that. Uh, what kind of championship was it? Oh yeah, mm. I do remember now. It was this championship, this title, this design. Let's go with that. The 80 style title before they changed it up um, in 1980. I want to say 1988. When they introduced the new championship. The winged eagle. All eagles are, are winged. I don't know why they that was named the winged eagle. As opposed to the no wings eagle but yeah it was a pretty good match which did it wasn't held in Austin Texas by the way NWO Hulk Hogan 
Hogan looks crappy. <laughs> he does look crappy. Oh yeah, look at how beautiful that belt is. A lot of blood and sweat and tears went into making that belt. Where the hell is the main plate? Where is the main plate? My God. Did it load wrong? Did and like, something happen? I don't know. Undoubtedly be a thrilling steel cage match. Hogan is pretty dark here, and I remember, like, he, he, he was a, a tanning freak, but what agility he wasn't that did. dark. Max Handel finds the mark. Here he goes. And, oh, leg, leg drop. That changes the entire complexion. For another leg drop. Oh, leg drop. This is all but over. And another leg, leg drop. drop. But he's got to capitalize now. I want to make him bleed. I want to make him suffer. According to historians, the twisted metal yeah. that we see as part of Steel Cage today the dates back 80 years. To settle a dispute between competitors Jack Bloomfield and Cal Pietro Rossi, the two met inside a ring surrounded by chicken wire. At first, these types make of matches him bleed were referred the hard to as fence matches. Oh boy, he is rolling. No blade job. Right no Bobby Heenan to give you a blade. Already. Corey, you gave us an impressive history of the origins of the steel cage, man. He's not going to go quietly. No superstar Rosie Assault ever does. Oh boy, he is rolling. Enough already. There we go. Surprised as you guys are. Oh man, what a light drop! That has got to be it. We talk about how important stipulations are in a steel cage match. If superstars sign a contract where the only way to win is escape the cage and have both your feet touch the floor, the competitors must have a plan. how to, especially since you have to be comfortable trying to escape through the cage door as you do climbing over the top of the cage and vice versa. I forgot how to escape. Oh, what impact! Corey, you touched on something moments ago that's so important for the combatants in a steel cage match to remember. A superstar must be able to think offensively to figure out how they're going to escape the cage. They must think defensively at the same time so they can prevent their opponent from getting out of the cage first and winning the match. Well, a superstar must become comfortable with escaping the cage by both exiting the cage door and by climbing over the top of the cage. They must also be aware of their attributes and what's best for them. Let's just say if you're a giant like the Big Show, The Undertaker, Kane, or even Braun Strowman, it's preferred to exit through the cage door. What a strike, right on the mark. What a strike! Oh, he goes down hard. Yeah, he's definitely starting to fade now. There we go. And the we're, comes into come this on, match get, get, get out of there. Though all the motivation in the world might not help here tonight. Oh, come on. He gets him with a reversal. Oh, that's the impact. And we're out of there. While the medical staff might say otherwise, this superstar's injury isn't even worth mentioning. At least that's what this superstar told me prior to the match. Yes! Takes it! And then the other thing Let's have a look. Overall, this match was average at best. But not every match is going to be memorable. <laughs> I've almost forgotten it happened already. Yep, an average match. Lots of blood. Multiple finishers. Well, that one was over before it even started. That's the kind of win that makes you feel good about yourself. Matches like that are the reason why I love this job so much. Yeah, that's about right. I would have given it like three and a half stars.
And that's pretty much it. That's WrestleMania 2. Started off the show with uh, the Battle Royal, won by Randy Savage. And um, that would be in Madison Square Garden. And then we flip over to Chicago for the main show. And uh, we have Tito Santana going over Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Or he w before he was the barber. And uh, we got also the Funks. Uh, well, well, before that, we had Andre and Mr. T going over Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff because of Paul Orndorff turning on Roddy Piper, uh, hitting him with a steel chair and hitting Mr. T with a steel chair. Thus, Andre and Mr. T win via DQ. And Andre, you know, uh, he chases Orndorff out of the ring. And uh, Mr. T and Andre stand tall as Roddy Piper turns face. And after that, we have the, uh, the Bulldogs losing to the Funks for the Tag Team titles. And we got the Intercontinental Championship match, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat uh, retaining his Intercontinental title against George the Animal Steel. And our main event, Hulk Hogan, retains the WWF Championship inside a steel cage against King Kong Bundy. That was WrestleMania 2. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did booking it. And uh, with that being said, like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell icon for future episodes on the Variety Vendor channel. And uh, share with your friends. Share with everybody. And check out my next video. We'll be talking about something else. Take care.